this falls, and it's been delightful. Overall, no complaints, just maybe one. In my last assignment, I was in Greene County, south of Albany, in the Catskills. Spring there came around April 1st or so. All the trees would be flowering. Here, it's more like May or sometimes June. But I will tell you that spring here is as glorious as anywhere in the world. We really appreciate it too. We're, we're the ones that really, really appreciate spring. You know, I, we, every day of spring and summer is a treasure to us. We're just so grateful for every little bit that we get. And, and I think that's a really good way for us to understand what Jesus is wanting us to hear from the gospel today. Jesus says, remember that you started off as a, as a tiny little green bud on a beautiful divine vine. You were on God's vine from the beginning and you've grown into a branch over the years. But, but the thing you must know is how much a part of this you are. What it means is we're part of something big, something alive. Our life is literally a branch of the very life of God. That can, that can be a lot to take in. Our life is a branch of God's own life. And that is the sap that's within us, in our branch. The sap inside of us is divine sap. It's what connects us to everything. It's what makes us in God's image. And we can do anything because of that divine sap. We can do anything. Our only job is to stay connected to that vine, to stay connected to that sap. As long as we do that, we can't go off track. Disconnection is the thing we have to avoid the most because we don't want anything to cut off our sap. Then this has more implications too because that means that our divine sap is the same that's in everybody else. We're sharing it with the other branches. So it's not woo-woo to say that we're all one. We are literally all one. We're part of the same life of God. We're branches on the same vine. So when we look at someone else, we literally are looking at ourselves. It's the reason why we can show empathy to each other. Because whatever's happening to someone else in a very real way is happening to us too. I got a text from one of my biggest mentors this week, Father Jim, a priest back home in Rochester, who I have looked up to for 35 years. I think he's the best homilist I've ever heard. I try to model so much of what I do on him. He told me that he had a bump on his tongue and that he went to the doctor and the doctor sent him to an oncologist and it turns out that he has cancer. They're scheduling surgery and what comes after that, radiation or chemotherapy, it's a little too soon to tell. And what I said to him when he told me that was, I'm sorry. But I didn't want to say that. I really wanted to say, lo siento. There are some Spanish speakers here. Lo siento is the Spanish version of I'm sorry. But it's not the same. It's quite a bit better, I think. The reason I didn't really want to just say I'm sorry is that I'm sorry is what I say to somebody when I've done something wrong. I'm sorry I said that. I'm sorry. Those, those words aren't really what I mean when I'm talking to somebody who's been diagnosed with cancer. I'm sorry, like I did it. The other thing that, that I'm sorry kind of has within it is a little bit of like, oh man, bad luck, huh? Which I don't like. That isn't what I mean. What I really mean is lo siento, which means I feel it. I feel it in my sap. 
we're branches on the same vine. So I feel that in my sap. I, as a priest, know how important preaching is to me. So when I think of Father Jim, my greatest mentor in preaching, if I even try to think about him losing his tongue, it's kind of how I felt when I heard that Julie Andrews, the famous actress and singer who played Maria in The Sound of Music, a few years ago she had a botched throat surgery and she wound up losing her voice. She can't sing anymore. When I heard that, I felt it in my sap. It made my scars tingle. I've never had a botched throat surgery. I've never had cancer. But because we're branches on the same vine, we don't need to go through the exact same thing that somebody else has been through in order to feel it on some level. Sometimes we take that too far and we say things that aren't helpful like, I know exactly how you feel. And that's not true. We can't ever know exactly how another person feels. But we have it in our sap to feel some twinge, even if we've never experienced infertility before or lost a spouse or had our, our place of business close or gone through any of the other things that, that our neighbors and friends sometimes go through. We can feel it in our sap because we share the same divine life. I wonder if that's what Jesus meant when he talked about being pruned. He said, expect that you're going to be pruned. And I wonder if he's talking about getting our hearts broken and letting the sap flow more freely. The more we've gone through in life, the more empathy we can show to other people. We've experienced more struggle. And so when someone tells you, I've struggled with this or that, we don't need to have experienced the struggle in order to feel the feeling of caring for them. Our compassion is what makes this vine the most beautiful. Our compassion is what allows us to be as, as fruitful as possible. And so when we get pruned, it's almost like we're, we're letting the sap go further out to our extremities so that there's no part of us that can't relate. If there's a part of us that doesn't have compassion for someone else going through something, it's appropriate that that part gets cut off because it's not going to flower. It's not going to green. It's going to be a, a dead end. And it's just going to, it's just going to drain the vine. So, so cut it off. Jesus says, let yourself be pruned so that you really feel lo siento with other people. That's what we've been reading about this week. For those of you who are reading this book that we're together reading as a parish, Rebuilt Faith, this week was all about sharing. And, and what it said was, sharing is just the truth that everything we have comes from God. Whatever talent we have, it's from God. It's not from us. I'm a terrible basketball player, and I'm a pretty good singer, and I can blame God for those things, because all of that comes from God. Somebody with wealth, they know it comes from God. Somebody with special abilities, somebody with whatever it is that we receive, it's, it's from God. And so sharing is what we must do. And I think it's important for us to remember that sharing is in every sense. That's what it means to be a part of the vine. We, we share our stories with each other. We don't, we don't hold back the, the things that other people need to know about us. We, we share our, our experience and our strength and our hope with people who need it. And we also share our resources. We don't hoard. No plant can become fruitful if part of it is all hoarded. It has to flow. The sap has to flow out to all the extremities. The beautiful thing about being a branch on the vine is it means that we're all connected directly to God. We don't need a go-between to get close to God. We're branches of the very life of God. A lot of times when we're trying to compliment someone who has the good qualities of their parents, we'll say that they're a chip off the old block. And that is a sweet thing to say, but, but what Jesus is saying today is better. We're more than just chips off the old block. 
We're branches, sap-filled branches on God's vine.